Hello class, welcome to the video lecture on characterization. Uh, this will be for the unit on the film's bow and lost in translation. This lecture in PowerPoint will cover uh, the intro and basics to the role of characterization in film, touch briefly on the relationship between acting and characterization, and then things to look for while watching the film bow. So uh, ideally you would watch this before screening the film. So, characterization. Uh, essentially, when we talk about characterization, it's the way a director, uh, a film, or a story presents a character to the audience. When we think about characterization, we can break it down into many parts, but we're also looking at it holistically. Everything that goes together in making up that character and their actions. One of the ways that we are able to understand and look at characterization are character traits. These are the way a character acts, a thing a character does, a specific quirk of their personality. In a film, they will oftentimes be repeated. So you will introduce a character with their character trait, and then it will come up throughout the film. Oftentimes, if you're looking to understand what a character trait is, you can describe it by kind of using almost an adjective, uh, or something that if the character noun is the person's name, you know, Jim is sadistic or he cheats sadistically, or he's happy, or he's neurotic, and so forth. We have two main types of characterization. We have direct characterization and indirect characterization. So let us look at direct characterization first. Direct characterization is something that is explicitly stated to the audience. Usually it is something the character says about themselves or what somebody says about them. It's a quality that, that is told to you, the audience member, about their characterization. So if we look at the examples provided on the slide, um, in the Avengers, we have uh, Bruce Banner tell everybody that he's always angry. That is direct characterization. He is telling the characters and telling you, the audience. In the middle example, we have uh, Forrest Gump. We have the moment when Forrest's mom is told that Forrest has sort of below average intelligence. We are told that directly uh, by this doctor character. And then in Deliverance, we have John Voight's character saying he was the best of us, talking about the character in his hands. So we are being told this directly about these characters. Next up, we have indirect characterization. If direct characterization is something we are explicitly told or shown, indirect characterization is when the audience is shown a character trait, but it is not explicitly told about it. The audience must infer what type of person the character is by connecting the evidence themselves. The film Bow almost uses exclusively indirect characterization. As you watch the short film, you will find out about the characters, their traits, their motivations, their goals, their attitudes, almost solely from what is being shown to you. No one is going to say anything. But in these two examples of indirect characterization, first, uh, on the left-hand side of your screen, we have a, a screen capture from the uh, film Animal House, and you can see how John Belushi's character in the center, we get a sense of who he is, the rate at which he drinks, how he's dressed, just by you know how kind of his, his shirt is slovenly compared to the other two characters who are in suit and ties. Next up, we have almost a classic trope of indirect characterization uh, from the film She's the One, I believe. Uh, we have the character who, uh, although you know a very conventionally attractive actor, um, is put in glasses with her hair sort of in a, a nondescript haircut in sort of baggy clothes to let you know that this is not a popular girl. Um, if you've seen the movie, um, you will see that she has a makeover and, and becomes amazingly gorgeous and falls in love. But indirectly at the beginning, we are shown, you know, this is someone who is a wallflower, who is a nerd, simply because they're wearing glasses and haven't done their hair in a sort of defined style. These would be examples of indirect characterization. Next up with characterization, um, with indirect and direct characterization, we have what we call stylization. Stylization of characters is a part of indirect characterization, and that's how the character is styled in terms of their clothing, fashion, and overall appearance. 
the way a character dresses and the way that they are, are pre presented in a costume is a huge part in telling us, the audience of a film, exactly what type of character they are. Now note, this can often be used to trick us as the audience member. We can be shown someone who is styled in a certain way so that by the end of the movie, we get the total opposite reaction. So for example, in the movie uh, Home Alone, the, the old man uh, that uh, Macaulay Culkin is scared of because he looks like he is an angry, scary uh, uh, old man, turns out to be quite a lovely, charming person. And then in Black Panther, M'Baku is presented and styled as an antagonist to the Black Panther, a gruff, dangerous person, but in the end is one of the few people to come and help him. So uh, direct Characterization is when the audience member is told something directly about the character or shown something directly about the character. Indirect uh, characterization is when the character is presented and you are shown something, but you have to figure out what, how, and how it relates to the character's motivation and traits. And then finally, how the character is stylized tells us a lot about the character, what they are wearing, how they are dressed, um, how their hair is done, and so forth. Finally, and we will talk about this uh, later on in this unit in another video, one of the key things that helps with characterization is, of course, acting. Um, characters are oftentimes people or performed by people if they are in an animated film or, or in, a, in some sort of costume. So how an actor portrays a character is probably the key part of how, that, how we understand characterization in a film. All right. Remember, one of the things we mentioned way back when was that films are often all about collaborative art form. You know, they're a collaborative work. They're a product of many, many people doing many, many different tasks. Well, one of those people uh, oftentimes is an actor. So an actor is one of the biggest ways that we understand a character. So let's look at this quote uh, from Barsom, and we'll come back to it in a second uh, lecture when we really deep dive into how acting affects characterization. Screen acting of this kind is an art in which an actor uses imagination, intelligence, psychology, memory, vocal technique, facial expressions, body language, and an overall knowledge of the filmmaking process to realize, under the director's guidance, the character created by the screenwriter. So one of the things that Barsom, in his chapter on acting, introduces is how actors look to embody certain characters how they um, try and think about everything that might go on that character's life, everything that was stated in the screenplay, and build and present a characterization full of direct, indirect, and stylized elements to us, the audience. We will discuss this topic further uh, uh, in this unit, later on in the unit. So let's very briefly introduce the characters for the short film Bow and give a brief introduction. Um, one, this is an animated film, and even though it is an animated film, that does not mean there isn't any acting and characterization going on. Um, it may be of a different type, but it is definitely stuff that we will be able to see through mainly indirect characterization. So our main characters are the mother and the dumpling son, a very cute little animated creature right there. Some of the important side characters are the father, and then later on, the girlfriend. So one of the things that you can kind of uh, mention and kind of notice about the indirect characterization right away is look at what the father is dressing. So obviously we have an Asian family, but if you kind of notice the sweater vest the father is wearing, you might get a sense of, of where they are located. Okay. Finally, um, things to note while you watch the film Bao. Uh, first of all, Bao is a short film. It's about 10 minutes long, I believe. Um, that doesn't have what we would call a focused antagonist. In Jaws, we saw the shark. In Metropolis, we had Rothwang, the evil scientist. Um, you know, even in uh, the film La Jete, we had the time-traveling uh, people who ran the camp in the future, the evil, the evil uh, scientists. Bao is different. Bao does not have a focused antagonist. Now, one could say that the conditions of time and aging are an antagonist, but uh, watch this and see if you agree with that. I, I'm not too sold on that interpretation. So even though the characters are animated, we can still follow their characterization. 
uh, watch the short film, and I suggest watching it twice, and look for body language, clothing, expressions, changes uh, in attitude, changes in stylization, uh, changes to hair, clothes, and uh, so forth. Pay uh, in particular attention to the way the dumpling son and the mother change throughout the film. All right, so watch Bao, and then we will discuss characterization and acting in the next lecture in this unit.